Welcome everyone. We'll be waiting two to three minutes to get started as a courtesy to those who are still in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and thanks for being part of our community. Before we dive into the topic today, I have a few reminders. Please feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the IM window. Be aware that any questions you post will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right where you below where you enter it. We've had a large number of people register for this webinar and we're thrilled to see such interest, but it means we may not be able to answer every single question in real time. We will do our best to get to as many as we can. We have several dedicated people standing by just to answer your questions, but I wanted to provide an additional mechanism to ensure everyone's questions get answered. If you'll visit aka.ms slash MCAS Q&A, you'll see a post dedicated to webinar questions. We'll be reviewing the question transcript after this webinar and we'll post further answers there. If you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question. So feel free to reply uh, to that post with any questions you have. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at aka.ms slash MCAS recordings. Uh, we'd also love to hear your feedback on this webinar series. Uh, so please check out our link for that, which is aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Uh, that'll be critical to helping us understand if we should do more of these, if these were valuable to you, how we can improve them, all that sort of thing. While you're there, please join our community uh, visit by visiting aka.ms slash security community. That's the best way to ensure that you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. You'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, requesting features, giving feedback, reviewing our product roadmaps, attending in-person events, or joining webinars like this. We believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So please join us. We have a great topic today. This is part six of a, the six part webinar series on Microsoft Cloud App Security or MCAS for short. 
Throughout this series, we have walked you through all the major pillars of functionality, showing you how to deploy and configure each part. Today's focus will be on automating security workflows with Microsoft Flow. We have two presenters today, Banu Jafarli and Sebastian Molendijk. They are part of our MCAS team and specifically members of our Git to Production group. The focus of their roles is to help our customers deploy and configure MCAS so they have deep expertise in this topic. So with that, I will hand it over to them. Banu? Great. Hi everyone, um, as Ryan just introduced me, I'm Bon Jafarli and I'm a program manager on our Cloud AI and security team. I'll be walking you through the deck and Sebastian will be walking you through the demo. So again, today we'll be talking about security workflow automation. So what is Flow? It's a solution that allows you to automate workflows from multiple devices, services, locations from anywhere, anytime. Overall, helping you work smarter and be more productive. It automates advanced scenarios with multiple steps such as branching, conditions, and more. So based on the specific action, the trigger begins. Based on a different condition and action, we're able to end it with an approval at the very end of the flow. Right here in this image, we see someone that received a notification that took a trigger, and then once the trigger happened, a file synchronization happened within Salesforce. After that, um, it was followed by an automation of approvals, which ended up collecting data. So Microsoft's Flows integration with Cloud App Security provides customer automation in addition to the various use of playbooks. So using the connectors that are available in Flow, you can trigger playbooks based on your conditions anytime an alert is generating Cloud App Security. So some of the things we can automatically resolve for are cloud threats, file policy validations, app discovery, as well as user activity. As we've seen here, if there's a cloud threat, you can automatically generate it. Take it in the management tool and you can use ServiceNow or JIRA if you have the appropriate licensing for this. You can route um, your cloud app security alerts to different SOC units for further investigation. You can request manager input to respond to CAS alerts, or you can even request a user to invest for input for, to investigate for CAS alerts. For example, if you have a user that you see an impossible travel for, you can create a specific flow where a user, um, an automatic email gets generated to that user and you're able to ask them, hey, are you in this country or not, to get additional investigation. And in addition to that, you can block uh, risky app activities based on discovery alerts, all using the Microsoft Flow. So overall, this functionality gives you the capability to see some of the alerts, policy, policy violations, app discoveries that are coming in in Cloud App Security and automatically resolve them based on the various options I mentioned. So in this slide, we have an example of a flow. So like I mentioned, it's centralized automation and orchestration. We have multiple various connectors to make this process easier for you. So we see in this flow here is when a specific alert is generated, we get the user's information. We send that user a text message to notify them that we're asking for their additional input. And then we send that user email with options such as please ignore, or I'm not sure. And based on the condition that user decides to choose, if they say yes, we will dismiss the alert automatically, and this is where the automation, automation comes into play, or if no, we will further investigate with Slack. And Sebastian will walk you through a couple of flows like this to show you how to create it and what you're able to do, and what are the different connectors you can use. So I just wanted to mention Microsoft's Flow's packaging. So Microsoft Flow it comes with Office 365 and Dynamic 365 workloads, and that gives you about 2,000 Flow runs per month. If you'd like additional, um, additional Flows per month, that's the P1 plan, which is the higher licensing plan. This gives you more Flows in addition to giving you connection to any third-party applications such as Jira and ServiceNow for your ticketing. And our last plan is the Microsoft P2 plan, which gives you about 15,000 flow runs per month, as well as admin capabilities 10 and wide with various advanced management as well. So the configuration with Microsoft Flow is pretty straightforward. 
The configuration steps are first thing you would have to do is create an API token in Microsoft Cloud of Security. Then you create an MCAS connection and flow. After that, you create a flow starting with a Microsoft Cloud App Security trigger. And then in the MCAS console, you just assign the flow to a policy, whether it's a file policy, an alert policy, to get that automatic um, automation remediation started. So today we'll be covering various scenarios. I'll quickly go over what they are. Our first one is requesting input from a user's manager to triage alerts. Our second one is auto-closing unusual location alerts when a user has an out-of-office message on. The third one is removing malicious uh, forward inboxing rule and exchange online. And our last one that I want to touch a little bit more on is disabling a user in Azure AD as well as on-prem Active Directory. So right here we see um, an integration that Microsoft Flow has with Azure Automation. What is Azure Automation? So it's an automation configuration service that provides consistent management both on Azure as well as third-party environments such as AWS and different service providers. So it consists of process automation, update management, and configuration of features, and it provides you control during your deployment operations and decommissioning of both workloads and resources. And what you're able to do is actually use the Azure Automation Connector and Flow to set this um, automatic remediation to reach both hybrid environments as well as on-prem environments, like the one we have here. So using this functionality with Azure Automation Flow, using the connector, you're able to reach your on-prem environment and disable the user in Active Directory, as well as reaching your hybrid environment and disabling a user in Azure Active Directory. So both environments the user will get disabled using the Azure Automation Connector within Flow. And the last scenario that Sebastian is going to cover is removing sensitive file sharing after requesting user validation. Sebastian, if you want to take over. Yes, thank you, Benu. And hi, everyone. So let me share my screen and continue with the presentation. So in the in my part, what we're going to do is to cover the different demo use cases that Banu just explained you. And the idea after this session is really to have you uh, being able to create your first flow right after this session. You'll see that uh, the different scenarios that I will cover will be for some specific cases pretty uh, straightforward, while older will be uh, a bit complex. So something that uh, we'll do after this uh, session is also prepare some blog posts and some uh, some uh, sharing of those flows, so you'll be able to re-import them by yourself in your own environment. So let's start with the first one that's going to request input from a user manager to triage an alert. So the, before being able to continue with the flow that you see here, the first thing I want to show you is the configuration that Banu explained. So in Cloud App Security, the first thing that you will have to do if you want to use the flow integration is to go to the settings, your security extension, and in security extension, you will see that you have a tab with API tokens. I already have my own API tokens, but when you want to generate your own one, you just have to click here, generate your token after providing a name like flow webinar, generate. And this is the value that you will have to use when you will configure your flow. So this is really important. You have to keep this value here. And Remember also the second thing here, which is the tenant URL that can be used sometimes for providing the username uh, when you're using the pressure module, for example. So that's really important to note this. When it's done, you can go to the playbook tab. I already have several flows created in my environment. So what you would have to do when you click on the plus button here is to go to the flow uh, page. You see that I'm being redirected uh, here in my flow. And if I look in my environment here in data, you can see that I already have some connections that uh, are already 
existing. So I will not cover all of those, but the one I want to show you here is this one, Cloud App Security. If I click on edit here, this is where you can enter the API key that we just generated. So this is how you can connect Cloud App Security and Flow. So the next thing you have to do when you want to use this uh, specific integration. So let me go back to my flow and uh, let's create a new flow. So I want to start by creating a new flow from scratch. I will show you how you can use template afterwards. And when you create a new flow, you start from this page. So you see that here, the first thing that you're asked to do is to use a trigger. My trigger will be Cloud App Security. And you can see that it appears here. And when I click on Cloud App Security, you see that there is only one trigger when an alert is generated. So if I click on it, this is going to use the connection that we saw in the previous steps. So that's the first thing I want to do. And this is how you're going to start your integration right after this webinar. The next thing I want to do is also define here um, a name for my flow. I'm going to call this webinar demo one. And I have to add several steps now. So the flow is always made of several parts. The first part is going to be a trigger, something that will trigger the workflow. And then when you click on next step, you have to define a specific action that you want to perform. For the first example, we wanted to ask a manager for uh, some information for triaging the alerts. So the first thing I want to do is to find a way to get a user manager. How can you do this? You see that we have a search bar available here. If I just tap manager, so let's pretend that I don't know that there is something that exists here. And you see that here we have some actions that exist in some of connectors, like this one, get manager. So if I click on this, you can see here that this is going to provide me, if I click on uh, the, the, the action here, information from a user manager. You see here, when you click on the information button, it provides you details about uh, the different action and trigger that you have in Flow. And if you want more detail, you can always click on the hyperlink here in the description. So I have now my action. You can see here that I need to provide a UPN. Which UPN should I provide? I have to provide the UPN of the compromised user that's related to my alert here. So if I click on the, this pane, you see that here, we have dynamic content that appears in Flow. What I can search for is something called compromised entity. And you see that here I have my compromised entity, which is my user related to my alert. And this is going to be totally dynamic here. A best practice when you're creating a Flow like this one is to always rename your action. So here, what I want to do is rename this and to be sure that somebody reading my flow will understand it. And here I want to specify, I want to get my compromised user manager. That's going the name of my uh, action. And another best practice is to provide a comment. And here it's just going to be demo webinar, but you could explain to your colleague what you've been doing here. So this is the first thing I'm going to do here. Second thing now, I want to ask my compromised user manager what I should do with this alert. So when I click on the new step here, I want to send an email. And if you look at the different option you have here, you see Office 365 Outlook. So if I click here, I can find all the different uh, possibilities I have. And if you look here in this list, you will see that Flow has uh, a an action called send email with options. Here, this one, send email with options. So when I click on it, you see that it's creating a new action here where I have to specify to whom I want to send this email. I want to send this email to my user manager. So if I search for the email of my user, you see that here I have get compromise user manager mail and this is going to send that person an email. So what will be the subject of my email? I will say something like security alert detected 
a compromised user. Really scary name here. Next thing I want to do, so let me click here on add assumption. I have to provide the different option for that email that will be sent to the manager. So you see that we have choice one, two, three. What I'm going to do, when I want to send uh, this email to my manager, I want to ask him uh, what I should do with that, uh, with that alert. First thing will be ignore alert. Second choice will be maybe disable user. And third option could be uh, let's say, uh, request investigation. So let's say that the first thing that I'm going to do here is to automatically close the alert in Cloud App Security. I will say that this is something I don't care. This is a false positive. Second thing is taking some action. So the manager is requesting to disable the user. Or here, I'm asking my security team to perform further investigation. Here, you have to, to specify a header text for the questions that will be asked to the user. And you could say, security alert. We detected a compromised user. What should we do? And that's going to be the header here. And you can then uh, provide more information for the, um, the header for the text with option. And in the body, you can provide more details. Something that could be interested, interesting here is to provide more details about my user. So if I look about my compromised user information, you'll see that if I search for something like display name, I don't have my user display name. I have the manager display name. So how can I get information from that user? The easiest way to do this is by querying Active Directory, uh, Azure AD, sorry. So what I'm going to do is add another action before contacting my manager. So I click on Add Action. And here I'm going to get to search for something like get user. And you can see that I have a nice one coming from Office 365, get user profile. So if I click on this email, you see that I can just prevent, uh, provide here a new PN. So I'm going to use my compromised entity again. I'm going to rename this action. And I'm going to name this get user details. So this is another action that I'm adding. So if I come back now to my email, I can specify in my body something like we detected a security alert. And I can specify, for example, information about my alert, something like the alert display name, and maybe the description. So this information is coming from Cloud App Security Alert. So here I'm telling my manager, we detected a security alert. Uh, this is information for the alert. And like you can specify for user. And now if I look for display name, you see that I have also my user detail display name. And this is how you can build your uh, email. You see that here I'm, I'm building something pretty fast, which is not uh, super pretty. I will show you an example with more details, but this is an easy way for you to add dynamic content to an, uh, to a, an email. And because here the body, you can specify that you want to use HTML only. Yes, I want to use HTML. You can use all the different um, all the different uh, tags that you have in HTML. Like uh, if you want to put things in bold or maybe uh, change the color, that's something that you can do uh, easily. So here, when I leave this action, you can consider that I've sent an email to the user manager asking for some action. So the manager will receive an email, but what should we do when the user, uh, when the manager click on the email to answer the question we ask here in that email? What we want to do is to handle the choice of that person. So how can you do this with flow? You have things that we call controls. So flow controls and in the control, we have conditions, we have loops that exist here. And the thing that I want to use here is the switch. 
So if I click on my hey, switch. Sebastian, can you talk yes. about the difference between the condition and the switch? Yes, sure. So uh, when you look uh, at the switch, the switch, uh, you specify what's the property I'm looking for. So here, what I'm going to look for is the selected option. So this is a selected option coming from send email. And the selected option will have a specific value. What's the value? It's the value that's coming here from ignore alerts, disable user, request investigation. So here, when I'm working with a switch, I have to specify all the different values. Like here, I will have to specify ignore alert. I have to click on my plus here to also add that I want to take my second case, disable user. And I had the third option, which was request investigation here, where I can provide this information. So the switch is going to look at the three different possibilities that I'm expecting from my previous action. And I have also by default default action. So if nothing matches the condition I've specified here, the switch is going to let you um, redirect your different uh, your different action in the right uh, right section. If we compare a switch with an if for the condition, so if I click on condition here just to show you, you see that the condition is built in a different way. You're you're building an expression that's going to produce a boolean value. The condition will be either true or either false. You could say uh, if, for example, if I look at uh, the value I had in my switch, if you want to do the same thing with uh, an, a condition, you will have to say if the um, selected option equals case one, I do this. It will be a no, so I will have another condition in my no and another a third condition in my other no to cover all the cases. So the switch is an easy way to cover all the different uh, cases that you're expecting from uh, from an answer. The condition, we will use this in a different flow and you will see that we'll, build, we'll be building a Boolean, um, a Boolean um, uh, operation based on several value, things that will come from different uh, sources there. And that will be the right solution for our future case. Here, when we look at what we are uh, obtaining from the uh, email, this is not the, the, the most efficient way to handle the answer. OK. And let me remove it so I can continue with my switch. But good question, Benu, thanks. So again here, best practice. You see that by default, flow created case one, case two, case three. I don't want to keep those names. So first thing that I want to do here is rename in ignore alert. Case two is going to be renamed to disable user and case three is going to be request investigation. And here we go. So after, with the selected option, we'll go to one of those different solutions. First thing that I'm going to do is look at ignore the alerts. So ignore the alert means that it's probably a false positive or a binning uh, true positive that the manager consider as um, useless for the company. So what I want to do when I have a, an ignore alert answer, I just want to dismiss the alert in Cloud App Security. So what I'm going to do here is looking for action in Cloud App Security. Search for Cloud App Security. And you see that in the action, we have several things. And one of the thing here is dismiss Cloud App Security Alert. When I click on dismiss Cloud App Security Alert, you see that I have to specify the alert ID. And for the alert ID, I have to use the provider alert ID here. So this is what I have to enter here for the flow to connect to Cloud App Security and dismiss the alert. You can specify here a dismissal comment. So I'm going to change this to dismissed after manager uh, request. So this is what's going to have to be reflected to Cloud App Security. Second case for disabled user, we're going to cover something really simple here. And I'm going to work with Azure AD. I click here on Azure AD. And the thing I want to do here 
is to update the user. Why do I want to update the user? Because if you click on show advanced options here, you see that there is a property called account enabled. And I want to set this to no. So the account will be defined as uh, disabled, which means that the user will not be able to access any cloud resources. This specific information here, of course, uh, do not prevent the, the user to access on-premises resources. And if you're using Azure AD Connect to sync your identities to the cloud, at the next sync cycle, the user will be enabled again. So that's not the ideal thing, and we'll cover uh, a bit further a scenario to uh, solve that issue. Let me rename this because we're talking about the best practice. And I'm going to call this disable user. And what I want to do after disabling my user, because I consider, oh, and I forgot to add my user. So here again, compromise entity. So not, now that I have disabled my user, what I want to do is to close my alert. So I'm going to cloud app security. And this time, instead of dismissing the alert, I'm going to, to tag the alert as resolved. So same thing compared to dismiss, but here I'm resolving the alert. I have to specify the alert. So provider alert ID here, and the resolution means resolved, whoops. And I click too fast here, and here I'm going to say resolved by disabling user account and if you want you can add some other details like manager requests and you can add the display name of the manager like this one here so you can also mark in your resolution some uh, some really good insight that we get from the full process so that's an easy way to do this so the first thing that i'm going to do to request investigation here, it means I'm going to ask my uh, SOC team. So there are many things that you could do. You could do, for example, uh, a connection to ServiceNow. We have a, a ServiceNow integration where you could uh, just create a new record, a new incident. But in this environment, I don't have ServiceNow enabled, so this is not something that I'm, uh, I'll be able to do. Uh, you could, of course, uh, maybe send uh, an email. That's something that you could do. You could also maybe send a message to a team or an easy one would be to use also Planner. If you want to use Planner uh, and create a new task to let your team handle this. And here you would have to just select the different uh, things that you have here and work with uh, the new task. So new incident. Here I could add the title of my alert. Oh, sorry, my display name, alert display name, etc. So you can provide all those details. Let's pretend that uh, things that those are things that you would do, and that planner will be your SOC team tool, which is probably not the case here. And maybe what you want to do is send back an email to the manager explaining that you're now working on this. And here, email manager alert escalated, etc. So that's the idea here. So you see here that I've been able to quickly create uh, a flow with different steps, and that's something that you can easily do in your own environment now with that information. You see that I didn't code anything. I didn't create advanced expression at all. So that's pretty straightforward. I just have to find the right actions in all the list, and I'm able to work with my flow here. So I'm going to save my flow. And now that I have this flow, what I want to do is to use it in Cloud App Security. So if I go back to Cloud App Security now, if I go to my policies, so you should all be familiar now with Cloud App Security Console. And what I want to do, maybe when I detect, let's say, uh, let's look for 
an activity policy that I would have in my environment. You see that I have here multiple fade login for a user. Something that I could do here is to attach this alert to a flow. And here I could select the flow that we just created, webinar demo one. And because we had it in the trigger flow, we see the flow that we created here in this list in Cloud App Security. I'm not going to change this one because that's uh, the one that I'm going to show you a bit uh, a bit later here, but this is uh, how easy it is. You just create your flow, attach it to an alert, and you're ready to go. And if you have any question here, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask on the chat. You have people that will be able to explain you all those things. So let's go back now to the other things that we're going to cover. So that's one, uh, oh sorry, and I forgot to show you something important because I told you that you don't have to recreate all those things that I've been doing. So something I want to show you when you want to start a flow, when you click on new, you saw that I started from a blank, but something that we provide for you are templates. So when you click on create from template here, you can search for different templates. And if you search for Cloud App Security. Your security. If my search accept to work, okay, perfect. You see that we provide some of those templates. And one of those templates here, you see that it's it really looks similar to what we just discussed. So you don't even have to spend the time that I, I took to show you this. You can select the template. You have to define the connection you will use. Here you see that uh, my ServiceNow connection is invalid. I don't have it, but that's basically a template that's going to, to do all the things that I showed you during my presentation. So quite easy, right? So let's go back now to the other demos. So second thing that we want to do is auto close unusual location alerts when a user has an out of office message on. on. So we discuss about this type of alert based on the user behavior in our uh, threat protection webinar. And for many people, something that uh, that we see is uh, that when the holiday period comes, just like uh, in those weeks or during summer, it becomes really difficult for the security team to investigate on true positive or false positive or banning false positive for unusual location. I'm based in Belgium, but uh, usually during summer I travel to France or I travel to Spain. So because I'm not going to those different locations uh, very often, Cloud App Security will detect my connection from one of those countries as an unusual location when I will connect to my service, to sync my email, for example. So what we want to do with this flow is to automatically resolve an alert when a user has configured an out of office plus some extra condition that you can configure. Let's have a look at this one. This time I'm not going to rebuild everything from uh, scratch. Uh, it will take probably too long and you would get bored of me. And hopefully you're not yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is to use this flow, auto close unusual location. So if I look at this flow, just like the previous flow, it starts with uh, when an alert is generated. So this is the flow trigger that we used previously. The second thing that I do is looking for my user profile, just like we did before to get this information. And the third thing I'm I want to do is to get the user out of office. Don't search for uh, get user out of office uh, action in your environment. What you can do just to show you this is to look for mail tips. Up, or it should be mail tip. Fine. Even exchange online is not appearing for me. Or oh, it's going to be Outlook, sorry. So here I'm looking at what I have in my action, and you will see that here if I find the right one, um, I will have my out of office and my mail tips if I'm able to find the right one. Get room more read. 
Uh, I don't want to set automation, so let me check. I'm, I've not forgotten the one I use here. If I look at the information, learn more just to be able. OK, this is get mail tips. So I'm surprised that, they, that I didn't find it right away. Here. And my browser is frozen. OK, perfect. So what you want to do here is not searching for this one, but searching for the uh, the specific action here, get mail tip from mailbox. So this is the one that you have to look. So I was looking for, um, uh, I was searching for one with space. So it's actually get mail tips in one word. So that's how you can find this information. So the mail tip is the, the message that you see when you're sending a message to somebody. And uh, that's an information that Exchange provides. If you want to know if somebody is, for example, uh, on, on holidays. So that's the out of office uh, message based on the mail tips or it's something that could tell you if uh, a mailbox is, uh, is highly sensitive or if a DL contains a lot of user. So what I'm going to do here is get that information just to know if we have an out of office configured. The next thing I want to do is to also get more details from our user from Azure Active Directory. And what I want to do is also check if a user is a member of a sensitive group, because what I want to do is to automatically close my alert for non-sensitive users. But if a user is a member of my VIP, for example, or maybe uh, a specific Teams, I want to take other action. To do this, you have to use this specific piece of information in your condition. So this information is the group object ID. And yeah, it looks bad when you think about your Active Directory group name. This is uh, an information that you have to use here for that specific action. Sebastian, how do we get that information? So to get that information, the easiest way is to go to Azure AD. And when you go to Azure AD, so let me go here in Azure portal and Azure AD. When you go to the group here, you can find all the different groups in your environment. So let's say that in my environment, I have uh, this specific group that I consider as being sensitive. If I click on this group, you can see here that on the Azure page, we provide the object ID. And here, this is the object ID that I want to use. So I can just copy this information go back to flow and paste this information right here in my flow. So that's the one that I'm going to use here to define that a group is sensitive. So when you use this specific action and here it's becoming um, uh, maybe a, a bit more complex. If you look at the description, you can see that if a user is a member of the group that we're providing here, the result will contain the given ID. Otherwise, the results will be empty. So it means that I'm asking Azure AD, OK, can you check if that user is a member of this group? If the user is a member of this group, I will receive in my message uh, this string that I provided. If the user is not a member of this group, uh, I will not receive that information back from this action. So what I'm going to do now is a condition based on this information and this condition is going to check first if the body, so the body here that you see, so the body is the message that I received from the check group membership action, so the previous one here, so that's the answer. And I'm looking if the body contains my group. So here I've changed my group, so this is going to be this one. And what I'm checking here is uh, a condition that say does not contain. So I'm saying if, the user is not a member of this group. And if the user out of office message, and here this is becoming a bit more complex to get this information, I have to use the, um, the floor expression language. So what I'm saying is to check for the get out of office uh, message that I got from a pre preview step. I want to look at the automatic replies property and check if there is a message. How can I check if there is a message? I'm using a function provided by Flow called empty. So here it's going to, to look if the out of office message is empty. If 
the out of office message, sorry, if the out of office message uh, empty test is equal to false, it means that the out of office message is configured. So the full condition that you see here means that the user has the out of office message turned on and the user is not a member of my sensitive group. So my condition here is true. So what I want to do is to automatically resolve my cloud app security alert. And I will add a message saying that the user out of office is on and the user is not part of my sensitive group. So this is only in the case for user I don't really care about. So there is no risk and those user are, um, are not a member of a sensitive group, plus they have an out of office message. For people that would be maybe member of this group, something that I could do, and this is where I could use my, con my uh, cascade of condition, if no. So it means that one of those two condition is true. What I could do is maybe add another condition with something like body this time contains the value. So this second the condition here, and let me add a comment to remember this. Add comment. So here it means that user is a member of the exec group, my sensitive group. So that will be my second condition. So what do I want to do if I detect the user is a member of my sensitive group? Maybe you want to request for escalation. Maybe you want to ask a manager to do something else. It's really up to you. I'm not going to go further in that step, but you see uh, how it works here. So you can really uh, create something pretty advanced based on those different conditions. And you could also check if it's the out of office that configure or anything else. You could also uh, maybe look for more information. Do we have other alert for that user? Do we have maybe, uh, in addition to the unusual location, an alert related to failed login? Do we have maybe some uh, sharing of sensitive data that are appearing? Those are extra things that we could do. We could also request some other things, like maybe requesting to change a password, maybe launching with Windows Defender ATP uh, a scan of that computer, any anything you can think about. But that's really the idea of uh, doing this thing. And something I really want you to remember is the left part, so not that advanced condition that we look, but this easy way to automatically close all those alerts that you don't really care about. So that's really a way for you when you have, you have the holiday period coming to improve your uh, efficiency at the SOC team. So next thing that we're going to do here is to look at another alert that we have in MCAS and that's able to detect malicious forwarding or manipulation rules in Exchange Online. And something that we want to do with this specific rule here is to automatically remove the malicious rule from the Exchange mailbox. How can we do that? So let's have a quick look in our flows. And here I've already created this kind of flow. And you see that I have now this one called remove malicious inbox rules. This one is going to be uh, a bit funny because it's, um, so as you see here, this is uh, still in preview. And uh, the alert provided by this connector do not provide all the time, all the right uh, information when you want to use specific manipulation. So what I'm going to do with this flow is something that you saw before, getting user details. So my compromise user here, getting my user manager. And something that I'm adding here that I didn't do before is to work with my cloud app security tenant. So I have to provide information on the cloud app security tenant that I'm going to use. I have to provide information about my API token and I'm going to call my tenant API to get more details for a specific alert. So I'm going to call the MCAS API to get my alert here. I have to parse the JSON because my HTTP request here to the API will provide me an answer in the JSON format. So I have to provide flow with the, the right schema to understand how to manipulate the data coming here from the API. And what I'm doing here is looking at my different entities, so at the information returned by the API, and I want to search for something called rule name. 
So rule name is the rule name of an inbox uh, rule, which is uh, provided in an MCAS alert. So this specific thing here is going to be used to go further in my investigation. So when I detect that I have an inbox rule here, based on the alert provided by MCAS, what I'm going to do is to create an Azure automation job. So this job here, and I should rename this, and I will say call remove inbox rule runbook. So what I'm doing here is to call the Azure automation that Banu talked about uh, some minutes ago. So what I'm doing here is to specify my Azure subscription. So I provide uh, the, the subscription name, the resource group I'm using, the Azure automation account I'm using, and the runbook name. So the runbook name here is called remove malicious inbox rule. And this runbook accepts two parameters. It accepts the information about my user and it accepts information about my inbox rule here. To see the details of what's going to happen here, I have to go to my Azure portal and in Azure, I have here my Azure automation account. I have some run books in my environment and one of those run, those run books here is remove malicious inbox rule. So let's have a look together at this uh, run book. And for those who are not familiar with Azure automation, you can run, run any PowerShell or Python script using this technique. So what I'm doing here, you remember that in my flow, I was providing two information, so my username and my rule name. So based on those two parameters, what I'm doing is to con get some credentials that are protected in Azure Automation to connect to Exchange Online. I'm collecting some information from my, um, from my uh, output. So here you see that I have my uh, date and I'm going to say I'm connecting to Exchange Online. I'm connecting to Exchange Online PowerShell using this command and I'm writing that I'm going to remove now my rule for my user and to solve that issue I just have to use this command remove inbox rules I provide information about my user so the mailbox here and I want, don't want to confirm because this is something that's going to run automatically and with this simple script I'm going to delete automatically malicious rules that will be detected by MCAS so that's what we have in our flow and Azure automation. So another thing that we do is to get the job output. So I want to get the trace for uh, from the script I executed here. I resolve my alert in Cloud App Security. I specify that I remove the inbox rule. And here I send an email to the user manager and my user explaining that we deleted uh, a malicious rule that was detected in that user mailbox. If you're wondering how we detect these rules, this is uh, a policy that we already explained during one of our previous session. So when you go to Cloud App Security in policies and you look for anomaly detection policies, you can see that we have here for inbox policies. So let's wait for my policy to appear here. And okay. And you see that I have suspicious inbox forwarding and suspicious inbox manipulation. So when I go to the setting of this policy, I can send an alert to a flow. And this is where I just have to attach my remove malicious inbox rule. So you see that this is something, it's one of our um, advanced built-in detection that you don't have to configure. The only thing that you should do here is to apply the remove malicious rules uh, runbook that we, that we saw in Flow. And also, if you want to avoid maybe a bad surprise, you can maybe specify the user to which you uh, want to apply these rules by including or excluding specific users. And let's update this rule.
And now with this integration between Flow and that built-in policy we have in Cloud App Security, you can protect your user inbox without much effort. So that's something that's going to automatically um, resolve this kind of um, data exfiltration issue that we see in many customers' environment. Next one, disable user in Azure AD. We already discussed that, but I want to also do the same in the on-premises Active Directory. So how can we do this? Yes, if you're, uh, uh, if you're now uh, used to what we just explained, you can understand that we're going to use again Azure Automation. And uh, as Benu explained you, so let me quickly show you something else here. We're going to use the, and I want to quickly show you this, the hybrid worker. So this is the technique that we're going to use. So in my environment, what I have is a domain controller on premises. I have my Azure Automation account in the cloud that you've already seen. And I also have my hybrid runbook worker. So this is the uh, agent running on one of my server on premises. So in addition of disabling the user in Azure AD, this time I'm going to also disable the user on premises. So let's have a look at this flow and see how we can do this kind of thing. So because this is a more advanced flow, I'm not going to build everything from scratch. What I'm going to do now is to show you this flow here called request manager input before disabling. So this is basically what we discussed before. You can see that I have uh, some extra step. So here I have a variable that uh, I'll be using for my uh, providing uh, some details. So when I go to my switch, so this is something that we already did before. You can see that we have the same thing we had before. The only difference is that uh, I'm posting a message here in Teams with uh, uh, after using a compose. So this is where I'm, uh, I'm uh, composing an HTML message to have something interesting I can post in my uh, in my uh, Teams channel. And the thing that we really want to look at now is manage request disabled user. So if I look here at this information, you can see that I have now my disabled user in Azure AD. That's the thing we already did before. Account enabled, no. But this time, because I'm going to also disable the user account on premises and potentially cause many impact, what I want to do is to inform the user by sending a short message. So that's also something that we can easily do here. So what I'm doing is going to send to the user mobile phone. So here for the demo purpose, I didn't use dynamic value. That will be the, the user um, smartphone number. I'm using my own phone number and I'm sending a text, dear Mr. Mrs. Uh, I'm using the dynamic uh, information here. Due to a security incident, we've disabled your account based on the manager input. And you can provide information like maybe your manager, and that could be a uh, dynamic, this number that you will provide, or maybe the service deck uh, telephone number so people know uh, which number they have to call to unblock their account. So that's one of the first things we're doing. The second thing that we're doing now is to disable the user on premises. And here, just like for the inbox rule, I'm calling a runbook here. And the information I'm sending to my runbook is this time the compromised entity uh, username. So this runbook here that I'm going to use is actually quite simple, just like the one we look at for the, um, for the inbox rule. So when I go to my disable AD account after an MCAS alert, you can see that this is a pretty simple PowerShell script. This script is going to import the Active Directory module. So the module must be installed on premises on the server that's going to execute this command. I'm using an on-premises credential, which is securely saved in Azure Automation. I'm collecting the date to get some, uh, some feedback uh, after in my output. I'm looking for my user based on my username. And what I'm doing here, if my user account is enabled, I disable the user account on premises in AD with disable AD account. And else, maybe the user account was already disabled by something else. I want to send this information back to Flow 
and I specified that the user account was already disabled. And basically that's it. And if that user account was uh, an account only available in the cloud, I also want to catch this explaining that the account doesn't exist. So that's the information that's going to come back here. So with this action, I'm able to disable the user in AD on premises. It could be also any other system. So if you have uh, other application or other external tools, those are things that you could add also here. Another thing that you could add here is maybe to, um, to revoke the user token and uh, block the access to, uh, to uh, Exchange Online because there is still some caching even after disabling the user. So that's something that you could do to completely lock the user account and then what I'm doing is to resolve the alert. I specified the, that the account was uh, automatically disabled based on the user manager. And I send an email to the manager explaining that based on the answer, we've resolved this incident. So that's the flow that we're doing here. So because uh, it's not easy to produce this kind of uh, thing in, uh, in life, I want to show you here uh, what we have. So what I'm going to do is to reuse some data from a previous uh, execution here. Uh, I just want to double check that my alert is open to avoid any issue. And what you see here is the alert that I'm going to use to validate my flow. So currently the alert is void. So what I'm doing here is opening the alert. So you see that the alert status is open. I'm going to now go back to my flow and I'm going to reuse data from previous flow. And just to show you how fast it is, I'm going here to show you this information. So here I'm connected. So this is my user manager called Julian Isla. And that user is going to receive the email requesting input. So let's test my flow. Let's go back here to the inbox. So you can see that the flow is running in the background and you see that I already received here my information. Security alert, your input is required. So it's, you see how fast it is. And you see that the user uh, received here this information. So we detected the security alert. We can provide dynamically information about the compromised user and the severity of the alert, plus the action here. So the first thing I want to show you here is the ignore alert. So you see how it works. So you see how simple it is for the manager to click this button. And if I go back now to my alert, in Cloud App Security. So that's the alert that was open. If I refresh my page, you can see that my alert has been dismissed because my manager requested to dismiss the alert. So that's how easy it is to let you automate this kind of thing. Second demo I want that, uh, Sebastian, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid we're gonna have to make uh, oh. next on the last example because we're running out of time here. Okay, but perfect. Okay, perfect, sure. So the last example that we can show you here, and I will conclude this with this part, is to remove sensitive file sharing after requesting a user validation. So why do we have this specific one? If I go to another environment for this one. Uh, what I want to show you here is that in Cloud App Security, most of the time you have a governance action that you can apply for, uh, for different uh, actions. So if I look, um, for example, for one of my policies, when you create a file policy, one thing that Cloud App Security proposed by default in the governance action is to make private a file. So it means that you're going to remove uh, the sharing of that file, or maybe remove external collaborators. That's something that would usually, uh, I haven't seen that to many customers because they're afraid of breaking some uh, something with the business. So what we can do with Flow instead is to send an email to the user explaining that we detected that they shared a sensitive file externally based on the policy in Cloud App Security. And then we have to ask the user, is it something that you're, uh, you are aware of? And do you want to remove the sharing? And based on the information that we'll provide here, 
what we'll do is to go back to the um, to the uh, uh, cloud app security api and request to make this file private so because we're running out of time i'm not going to um, go into the details of that uh, specific sharing but here i really wanted to show you all the things that we can do so this is really an easy way for you to educate your user instead of uh, applying some action on the it side so that's really asking some uh, actions from uh, from the end user and the person that really know if we have some validation. And with these examples, we've finished those different use cases. And I'm not sure we have time from Q&A and we can of course do some follow up on the tech community if needed. Yeah, we'll have to handle any uh, questions there at the uh, question overflow link that I gave, but we did handle them throughout and I think we're caught up on all of them there. So I think we addressed everyone's that was on the call. So fantastic. Thank you for that, Sebastian. Thank you, uh, Banu, for a very compelling presentation today. Also, there's lots of other people involved in uh, making this webinar series happen, uh, including but not limited to Alex, Kim, Shalini, Gershon, Anisha. Uh, most of all, I want to thank uh, Yoan for being the driving force behind making this happen. And of course, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us. Uh, and we hope to see you on future webinars and we hope to see you uh, on our community in general. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everybody.